Copper, uh, Gordon wants to know what rhymes with care. Electric chair. <laughs> right. Is that cop Nancy? No, he's not a cop. He's a reporter. Well, he acts like a cop. He carries a gun, and all he can think about is taking you back to the electric chair. Oh, and there's your rhyme. Chair? Uh, care. Okay, there you are. Great, that's it. Let's see, wait a minute. I'm lily white from now on because I'm headed for the electric chair. It's disgusting. Well, what's the matter, Doris? He certainly is having a lot of fun at your expense. Get out of the way and make room for the musicians. Yeah, you know, they was all right, but one thing. Why don't you tune it once in a while? That's that's tune what? But this, you're not playing it, Tom. Why don't you lock him up? Well, I will, dear. About a day before we reach port. After all, he's only being taken back for trial. He hasn't been convicted, you know. Well, my brother's been locked up for a crime Gordon Wayne committed. And here's one. Take a card. Any one of those. That one? All right. Yeah. Well, look at it, Stoop. Can't do a trick if you don't look at it. Put it back. I'll shuffle them. You shuffle. <laughs> there you are. It's your card. The Jack of Clubs. And clubs mean cops. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going down and dress for the captain's dinner party tonight. All right, darling. I'll meet you in the salon as soon as I round up Wayne. All right. I know the house. All right. Anyway, I'll show you one. I'll show you one you never saw before. Good evening, Miss Evans. Good evening. There's a pretty girl. Pretty mean, hounding poor Gordon Wayne, tracking him all the way to Cape Town and bringing him back. Oh, honey, it isn't she. It's that reporter she's engaged to. Well, she's engineering the whole thing. Say, you would, too, if your brother was held for murder and the guilty man escaped. You know how far a newspaper will go to get a good story. Yeah, and I know how far a woman will go, too. And here's a trick. It really is a trick. It's one of the best tricks I ever... Ship's party tonight, Wayne. I've got to dress for dinner. Okay, run along. I'm not going. Then bring my dinner jacket. <laughs> you know I'm not going to leave you here. Well, suppose you do. I'm not going to play tag with the sharks down there. <laughs> the government has placed you in my custody, Wayne. Yeah, show them your gun. Frankie. Here, cut the horse play. Hey, listen, you can't handle me like that. I'm not your easy, prisoner. Easy, very easy. Well, don't argue with old John Law. <laughs> no more morning blue. <laughs> Open that door. Well, you come out if you fire this rest. If you don't open it, I'll lock it from this side and you'll stay in there all night. Say, what's the matter? What's the trouble here? Well, come on, see a pal if you want to buy us a drink. I'll buy you a drink. What's the matter? What's the trouble 
Franklin has said that Wayne is guilty. And Franklin is an honorable man. <laughs> if you have tears, prepare to shed them now. You all remember well the tale. A policeman was shot. Young Evans arrested. Turned state's evidence. And said that Wayne did the killing. Wayne has fled. Yeah. And young Evans is an honorable man. He comes from generations of honorable people. So is his sister an honorable man. <laughs> <laughs> the public, inspired by the press, clamors for a Roman holiday. And the press is deputized to bring Wayne back to the bar of justice. Ah, speaking of bars... Let's all have a drink. One man's word against another. And what chance is Wayne? It's tough, all right. But of course, you made a mistake in running away. Sure. Why didn't you bluff it out? Are those your sentiments? Oh, we're for you anyway. You probably had a killer. There's a jury for you. The verdict is guilty. Now, uh, come on, let's all have a drink. Good evening. 
Aren't you ever going to dinner? Well, just as soon as they finish their coffee, dear. What he uh, needs is a wife to manage him. That's what I think, and that's what I want. How about it, Captain? Can you marry him? Uh, delighted to oblige. It would be a fine climax for my party, the thing. <laughs> Hey, Colonel, sir. And I think we're off on course. coast of Africa. No sign of anything. Yeah, it's tough, all right. Well, the first thing to do is to make her comfortable. We'll make camp back in the jungle. We'll build a pond, dry our clothes out. Okay, Africa. Here, Eddie. Let's make a shelter back there. And I'll see what I can do about some food. Here. 
Can you walk all right? Very well. Smells good. It's got to be good. But uh, what is it? Well, you can call it quail on toast. We'd mind if we had some toast. Yeah, and if we had some quail. Say, Eddie. I think you can uh, dig up some sort of a plate and take this over to the lady? All of it? All of it. Okay, chef. <laughs> oh, Miss Evans. Yes? Would you have some nice roast turkey? Or something? Thanks. Let's get him up out of the water. Where, where's Doris? He's safe. We've made a camp. Here. Here. Where? Did you see anyone else? Captain was on the part of the ship to stay afloat. I was washed off, and then I managed to tie myself to that boat. Eddie, go back and look it over. See if there's anything we can use. Okay, go. Oh, oh darling. Oh, John. Oh, I'm so glad. Come on. Come on, let's go to camp. doing so bad. We have plate, and we have salt, and we have hard tack, and we have tea, barrels of tea, breakfast tea. I wonder if it's all right for supper. I guess we can take a chance and see what's in the duffel bag. All right. No. 
Good. <laughs> How's this for a fit? Too small. That's what I thought. <laughs> and look, a razor and blades. Great. Another week we'd look like the Smith brothers. Why, that's Adam and Eve. How are you, pal? How's the old Garden of Eden? <laughs> Ahoy! Dinner is served at the captain's table. I'll bring your dinner here, daughter. Crackers. <laughs> I guess the captain's table ain't so popular. Say, we've gone to the trouble to make this table. Why not use it? Hasn't it occurred to you that Miss Evans would rather not eat with you? Here we are. Evans. We might as well face the fact that the four of us have been thrown together here in the jungle. Let's make the best of it. I thought that... Now, you... just a minute, Doris. The wreck hasn't changed anything. Oh, yes, it has, Franklin. There's only one law here. No cops, no jails. That's the law of the jungle. Say, while you guys are arguing here, our dinner's getting cold. Come on, Miss Evans, let you and I go while they're doing the chinny. You're right. Why go around with chips on our shoulders when the important thing is to exist until we can get out of here? My Doris! You know, that gives me a great idea. Let's pretend that we've just met for the first time. There's no past, just a future. Let's bury the hatchet. Good. Now then. Come on, John. Hocus pocus, habus vadabus, he pluribus unis, he bad spirits, gone. <laughs> you know, after all, this food is uh, not doing you a bit well, of good. Well, they're warming up. I was thinking that would be a good idea. <laughs> you know, you can't run around the jungle with this on. I have a surprise for you. Look at that. Oh. And them, or the, this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, I'm in this too. Well, help yourself. Don't be an orange, Franklin. They don't know who you are. I thought we'd buried all that. And you're the first one to break your resolution. That's right. Anyone that breaks a resolution must pay a forfeit. What will it be? <laughs> Wash the dishes. <laughs> you would think of that. Okay, Africa. But as long as I'm stuck first, I'm going to keep score on the rest of you guys. We're going to force our way through that swamp and see if we can find a way out of here. Well, I'm not really interested, but if it'll help get you out of my life, let's go. Not a chance, Gordon. We can't get across. There's nothing but swamps on all sides. It's too risky. What's the matter, Franklin? Ready to arm your prisoner? I'm not taking a chance of being stuck in the back by a mug with your reputation. Yeah, newspaper reputation. 
<laughs> Say, if I ever do start in on you, I'll take you apart with my bare hands. That's a promise. Well, you can always try. Gentlemen, or am I mistaken? Say, why not let's try the boat this time? Nothing doing. I've floated around that leaky scow all I'm going to. Come on. Let's get going. We'll all stick together this time. Wait a minute. I don't like the idea of leaving Doris alone. Miss Evans to you. And I'm not interested in what you think. That's for me to worry about. Boy, what a mean-looking mama. Franklin, you should have left that gun with Miss Evans. I'm the best judge of that. The important thing is to find a way out of here. Come on. Eddie, you better go along with the Boy Scout and see that he doesn't get lost. Get lost? Gee, that would be too bad, wouldn't it?
Look out. You'll get the wound infected. Come on, Jackie Camp, and I'll dress it. Come on. That's fine. Thank you very much. Well, it's better to scratch on my arm than yours. It might have been your life. Or mine. Strange, isn't it? How a human being will sometimes give willingly. The very thing he'd fight to keep if it were demanded of him. I hope you've learned to stay out of the jungle while we're gone. I've learned a lot of things since we came to the jungle. Not a chance, Gordon. We can't get across. There's nothing but swamps on all sides. It's too risky. The next time I tell you to trail with us, you trail with us. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How long have you been here? Not very long. Say, Gordon. What's the matter with your arm? I oh, scratched a bit, that's all. What happened? You're a big news hound. Find out. <laughs> You're cooked tonight. You better run down and see if your lady turtles laid any more eggs. Yeah, the stupid things. Why don't they build nests so we wouldn't have to be digging up the whole beach? I'm going down to work on the boat. Come on. Say, Gordon, why don't you tell Doris your side of the whole story? Listen, Eddie. That girl loves her brother more than anything in the world. I'm certainly not going to make it tougher for her by... Oh, come on. Oh, hello, John. Everything all right, darling? Well, of course. How long has Wayne been back? Oh, I don't know. Just a little while, I guess. Did you find anything? Nothing. What happened to Wayne? I, I don't know. What do you mean? You know what I mean. His arm is bound up. He had a fight with an animal, I believe. You believe? You know. You bound his arm up. He couldn't have done it himself. All right. If you must know, he saved my life. What are they? Albatross, and this is their mating season. <laughs> He's trying to teach her the Albatross Gazzotti. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. Sheffy's got to be getting back. I've got an old one you've never seen. Take a card. 
If you say that to me again, I... All right. Looks like nobody wants to play with us. Will you stop that strumming? It's terrible. Oh, sounds like someone's out of tune. Ah, I've got it. Sounds a lay, maestro. Mm -hmm. That's fair enough. What could be worse than to be stranded with a couple of bum entertainers? <laughs> a quartet. Well, I guess I'll have to do my strumming somewhere else. Say, Gordon, I hope you don't meet a lion with uh, Franklin's idea of music. <laughs> company wasn't good enough for you. Why, John? Well, you left right after Wayne did. I don't know what's happened to you, Doris. One month in the jungle, and look what it's done to you. It's done things to all of us, hasn't it, John? Well, at least I've kept my self-respect. I don't understand you. You know what I mean. Accepting the friendship of a man like Wayne. Well, what would you expect me to do? I think Gordon has acted admirably. Gordon! Oh, so that's how it is now. Yes, that's how it is. And you're right. The jungle has done things to me. Before we came here, I thought he was a beast. And now I suppose he sprouted wings. No, but he has proven himself to be a man. I didn't follow you halfway around the world to rock on this deserted coast. I wish I'd never heard of Gordon Wayne. You didn't go after Gordon Wayne because you loved me, but to get a newspaper story. Well, I hope you get it. And I'm going to accept him for what he is. All right. Be the friend of a murderer if you like. But I'm going to take him back to the electric chair if I die in the attempt. Say, Franklin. You know, uh, you owe me sixty-two fifty now. Would you uh, like to get even? Well, all right. Get out of here. Say, Franklin, don't you think uh, you're a little tough on your uh, relatives?
That's the call of the jungle. Well, I'm glad you came. I've been wanting to talk to you alone. I wanted to tell you something. It's sort of a secret. Eddie and I have been working on the boat. I think we've got it almost seaworthy. Does that mean we can get away from here? Just as soon as I finish the mast, and we can make a sail out of the tarpaulin. But what about these sudden storms? That's a chance we must take. A chance you must take. If you care to. You mean you're not coming with us? I might try it alone. If I made it, send someone back to rescue you. Oh, but you could never make it alone. Could you? I might. When you get ready, why don't you try? It's your only chance. John would never let you get away if he knew. And how about you? Would you let me go? When you go back to the calendar, you can chalk up a thousand violations against me. I've fallen in love. Doggone. I've worn the spots off of these cards and no luck. We've had plenty of bad luck. I don't think we're ever going to get away from here. Oh, stop it! I'm sorry, Miss Doyle, but what's happened to you lately? Oh, I don't know. I guess we're just getting on each other's nerves. Well, stop squawking. We're all in the same boat. Cut the cards, and, and I'll tell your fortune. Oh, as I live and breathe. A marriage. That means we've got to be rescued first. And if uh, that takes care of you and Franklin, of course we're going to be rescued. What do I see here? Or perhaps I shouldn't mention it. Children? Don't be a fool. what I found. Isn't he a nice little fellow? Here, take it. Hooray! You see? The first child. I tell you, the cards don't lie. You listen to me. Maybe you think you're making it easier on Doris by keeping your mouth shut, but I don't. Me? What? 
Well, you and I have been pals for years, haven't we? Well, you leave it to me to fix this whole thing up. I'm going to tell her the truth about her brother. I told you 20 times to keep your mouth shut, and that means shut. Well, I'm going to tell her just the same. Miss Dollar... I don't think so. And you won't tell Doris, will you? Okay, Africa. Say, there's some wreckage floating a couple of miles offshore. Maybe it's the part of our boat that didn't sink. Any signs of life? Yes, I thought I saw someone moving. Say, we might be able to launch the lifeboat in high tide and get out to it. The boat? How can we use it? Well, we fixed the link and Gordon made a man. Oh, getting ready to try a sneak, were you? Wrong again. You know, Franklin, as a newspaper man, you've batted exactly zero since we came here. Now, listen to me. Now, I the main to... thing is, are we going to try to get out to the derelict or not? Now, come on. Let's check up on our boat. Let's see if it's all tight. Oh, yeah. There's a light burning. There's somebody here. Sure, there must be. Come on, on board. Go around there. Come on, we'll get up there and see if we can find it. Well, here we are. Around here. Here he is. I see you still got your man, Mr. Franklin. Why, it's Captain Anderson. Aye. What is left of him? What happened, Captain? We struck a reef in the morning. There wasn't even a lifeboat in sight. And what was left of my ship was fast on the rock. Later, a storm broke me loose. I have been drifting in the current. Didn't you see any other ship? I saw smoke on the horizon several times. We were off our course when we struck. Well, couldn't you get ashore? No. My ribs are broken. My leg is badly injured. And it's too late now. Captain, is it still possible for you to marry people? Yeah. That is maritime law. As long as I have my ship under me, I am its master. Will you do it, then? Yeah, I will. Get me my logbook, please. In my chest. Gordon, will you marry me? Doris, are you crazy? No. Perfectly sane, and I've made my decision. Well, as long as he's in my charge, you'll never marry him. It's no use. I'm going to marry Gordon. All right, Wayne. Remember, this mockery doesn't change anything. We're ready, Captain. Virtue of the authority vested in me as master of the ship Brunhilde, I pronounce you man a wife. What is this date? I have lost track of time. I'll fill it in for you, Captain. Thank you. Uh, 
I need your signature as a witness. Take the book. We can't leave him alone here to die. And this is no place for you, Doris. I'll take her back to camp, then I'll come out for you. Yes, take me back, Eddie. Eddie, take this for her. Okay. Captain, isn't there something I can do for you? Yeah. My ancestors were Vikings. Their ships were their funeral fires. When I am gone, I should like to sail that way to Valhalla. Yeah, to Valhalla. What are you going to do about all this? About all what? You start out to get a murderer and end up by marrying him. As soon as that boat's ready, I'm going to take you out of here, back to civilization, where you can come to your senses. As for Wayne, the law will take care of him, and there'll be no mockery about that. Oh, sorry. Just a minute, Franklin. My wife's not a widow yet. No, but she will be if you start resisting an officer. There's plenty of time to talk about that later. You might as well make up your mind, Franklin. I'm not going back. Well, if that's your idea... Folks, there's a boat offshore. A boat? Just a minute, Wayne. We're back to the laws of civilization now. And I'm going to keep you in irons this time. <laughs> They must have seen the fire of the funeral ship.
saw it. I know all about it. You were innocent. How do you know? My brother tried to escape, and he was killed. And before he died, he told the truth. All the world knows it now. The ship returns in ten days. It's our honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs>